Rebel provides a fantastic array of easy to use built in functions that let you do a variety of high level actions that are useful in programming. You can um, manage files on your hard drive, you can copy and paste files for example between folders, um, you can send and, and check email, um, you can perform calculations, um, you can manage files on FTP servers, web servers, um, you can uh, use the built-in text editor and so forth. Uh, there are sound functions and, and you know functions to do just about anything that's, that's useful in programming, but as you build larger and larger programs you realize that there are are uh, things that aren't included in Rebel that, that you need to that you need to use to be able to build the programs you want. The built-in elements are basically building blocks um, for more complex and specific um, functions. So in many cases you, you'll find that other people have created functions of their own um, that do things that, that you may find useful in your programs, things that aren't built into Rebel. Here's a function for example that um, will play a sound. It'll take a sound file from the hard drive and um, and do all the things necessary to play that. This is the sort of low-level code that's needed in Rebel to play sounds. Um, what I'm going to do is save that to a text file. And to do that, I'm going to use the built-in editor in Rebel. Uh, since I'm not opening a file, opening a file I'm going to type in editor none. And I'll paste that into the editor and we'll save it. Save that as play sound. R. Now that file is on the hard drive, contains all the, the code for this function. And all we have to do to, to include that function now in the interpreter is use the do function. It's not in the C drive, it's actually in the local directory. And you can see by using the do command, um, we've opened up that playsound.r file and it's imported the play sound um, function from that script. Now we can use that function as if it's a native function built into Rebel. Play sound did not exist before, it's not part of Rebel, but it's built from Rebel building blocks. And now we can use that function, play sound, as if it's a built in function in Rebel. So when it plays the chimes wave. And you can use it to um, play any other sound that you'd like to. This basically just plays wave files. Okay. So that's a really useful ability because um, around the world there are a number of um, people working on creating rebel code that's useful and uh, they've come up with ways to do things that, that are uh, common and required in creating programs these days. There is, for example, at this website, um, a module of code contains a variety of functions that help you do things um, with GUIs. For example, this is called rebgui.r, and if we import that, and again, it's not in the C drive, it's on the local, I've pre save this the local directory and I get the script loaded. Now we can use functions that are in that existing uh, module of code. For example, the display module, the table module, this little, or the table uh, function, um, those are not functions built into Rebel. Those are functions that were created in this, this module and this particular function uh, allows you to create a, a grid for data, a data grid, uh, that's easily resizable um, with columns that, that will automatically sort ascending and descending according to the, uh, the info in that column. That's a useful GUI function. Display and so forth are not um, native Rebel functions, but we can use them as if they are native Rebel functions once the Rev GUI module has been imported. And there are a ton of other useful modules out there on the web. Um, there's a listing here of a, a bunch of the especially useful ones. This, for example, is another GUI widget that we can uh, import and use. And it, it does a, uh, an enormous number of things for allowing us to organize and view um, lists of data. Um, 
This is a database that you can import and, and use to store um, information and retrieve information. There's also a spell checker at that uh, website. There's a module that lets you deal with uh, zip files. Um, here's one that lets you print create PDF files. Uh, a really popular one that lets you deal with MySQL databases as if they were um, uh, you know, native format in Rebel. You connect to an online MySQL database and, and pull information out of it. That's really useful for uh, creating websites, a really common way of uh, dealing with data on websites. Um, here's one that lets you um, build menus nicely in Rebel. Rebel's GUI, strangely enough, doesn't include um, many uh, built-in uh, tools for just building menus and this this lets you do do it with a nice cross-platform um, uh, system that looks appropriate for each operating system and you know there are a variety of other things here that you can look through uh, a 3d module that's fantastic at, at dealing with 3d models without having to import or have any other uh, 3d components on your system like OpenGL um, dealing with XML Flash files and a variety of other a variety of other tools are available, and these are sort of packaged modules that you can just import and use. Um, but you can also find many other functions in the code at rebel.org. That's a that's an enormous library of code that uh, you can find functions in and and you know sort of pick and, and choose from, from code that's available there. If you find useful functions, you can save them to files and use them in your own code. One of the other things you can do is use the call function to run programs, actually full compiled programs uh, that exist on your operating system to help process data. And that can be useful when you're programming. You may want to call an operating system uh, file, some sort of program that exists on your system to accomplish an action for you that may not be, for example, as easy to do in Rebel. Um, you may want to use, for example, an open source program uh, to, to do some processing, some high-level sort of processing for you, or some more specific uh, processing for you. And it's easy, you just use the call function, you include basically what amounts to a uh, DOS command line um, in quotes. We're going to run notepad.exe here and open up the data.txt file that we created earlier. And you can see that runs the notepad program and it opens up the text file. If we had, for example, some program that did maybe image image processing or um, complex calculations, that could be useful. Uh, and this example just opens up MS Paint in the same way to view an image file. Um, the next example here uh, demonstrates a, a useful technique. What What's going on here is this is some embedded um, uh, compressed code, a text version of a binary program that I created in another language. This, this, crea this was created in um, uh, a different programming language compiled and turned into a, an executable file. Uh, so there's no rebel in that code, but what we've done is uh, embed it into the code, so now it exists as rebel text, and we're going to write this um, binary text that would assign the word program to the file program.exe on the hard drive and uh, put that on the, on the uh, D drive okay. now it's written and that exists as the compiled program that it was now we can run that and use the call function to run that program Just on the hard drive now. And you can see this is now happening from within a Rebel program, saved entirely as text in that Rebel program, so there are no external dependencies or anything that need to be installed on the machine. Um, and that that can be useful when you're creating programs to use other helper applications. Um, one thing you have to watch out for uh, is that this can limit the uh, cross-platform ability of Rebel. For example, if you're using a you know a Windows command line fun um, a program to perform some action, uh, then that Rebel program is only going to be usable on Windows. Uh, so you want to be aware of, of that. You know, Rebel is cross-platform, and if you use anything that's made specifically for a Mac or, or Unix, for example, then you can't run that program on Windows.